So, as we just said, the Earth's atmosphere applies one atmosphere of pressure on us. This is just due to the weight force of the air up above your head. Now, if you climb a high mountain, you get above some of that air. So there's less air up above you, and so there's less weight force being applied on you. So this means that as you climb a tall mountain, the pressure actually decreases. Now, this has some interesting effects on things like the temperature at which your kettle boils, which is why it can be very hard to brew a cup of tea at the top of a high mountain. The pressure is so low that the water tends to boil at a much lower temperature because it's much easier for the water to evaporate and form the water gas and so it can be very hard to brew your tea without all the water evaporating. Height above sea level isn't the only thing which affects pressure. The weather can also affect pressure. When it's warm weather, the atmosphere is less dense and so you've got less weight of air above you and so the pressure is actually slightly lower. When we have very cold air, this air is more dense, as we saw in the hot air balloon topic, and so there's more weight of air above you, and so the pressure actually increases a bit. Now this isn't quite as obvious as it sounds. On a hot day, the amount of atmosphere or the total mass is actually the same. It's just that on, as on a cold day, Day, we don't suddenly lose half our atmosphere just because the temperatures change. So what's actually happening is that on a hot day, sun's heating up the air, here's the ground, and so as the air heats up, in the morning the top of the atmosphere is here, it's heated up by the sun, by the time the sun's heated the atmosphere, the top of the atmosphere has actually been raised a little bit because it's become less dense and so it's taking up more volume. And so what's actually happening is that the weight force of this air is slightly reduced because the gravitational force F is equal to G M1 M2 over R squared. Now one of these masses is the mass of the earth. So this is just the mass of the earth. And for each of the particles in the atmosphere, this is just the particles in atmosphere. And now the distance from the centre of the Earth to the top of the atmosphere, the average distance has actually increased. And so this means that the force has decreased and this is just the weight force. So your weight force has increased and then because pressure is equal to force over area, as the force decreases, the pressure decreases as well. Now temperature is not the only thing which affects the pressure. Winds can also affect the pressure. So a low pressure region tends to indicate that there's winds coming in and we're going to have stormy weather. And a high pressure region tends to indicate that fine weather is on the way. How we measure pressure atmospheric pressure is actually with a barometer. So you can use a barometer to quite accurately predict the weather. Now traditionally barometers were a big cistern containing mercury with a tall pipe in them. What happens is that the pressure, the atmosphere applies a force due to its pressure on the surface of the mercury in the cistern. This pushes it down, which forces the mercury to rise up the tube. Now, as the mercury rises up the tube, it will rise up until the weight force of that mercury in the tube balances the force from the atmospheric pressure pushing on the surface of the mercury. So let's just have a quick look at how we can calculate this to work out how high the mercury would rise with a typical system when we have one atmosphere of pressure. Okay, so let's consider this um, system. We've got a cistern down here which contains lots of mercury and up above it we've got a sealed tube made of glass so that we can see the height of the mercury. So this is mercury in here 
the density of mercury is equal to 13.534 grams per centimetre cubed, which is also equal to 13,534 kilograms per metre cubed. And we've got one atmosphere of pressure approximately acting down here and this causes the mercury to rise in the tube. Now the pressure inside the tube here is zero because we start off with a vacuum in the tube. So now the easiest thing to actually equate is the pressure at this point here. The pressures need to be in equilibrium. So the pressure, there's two things creating pressure at this point. One of them is the weight of mercury here. So we've got pressure is equal to force over area. In this case, it's mg on A, where m is the mass of mercury. And we know that that is equal to the volume times the density. We saw that in the hot air balloon topic. That's the mass times g on A. And this is some height h. And this tube here with a sealed end can have cross-sectional area A. So the volume is equal to AH, and so this is AH rho G on A, and these A's cancel out, and we end up with H rho G. And so that's the pressure that this mercury up above is applying on this point. Now, this pressure, which we have approximately one atmosphere applied here, is transmitted through the mercury to this point as well. So that pressure is caused by a force which is pushing upwards at that point. So that's actually called Pascal's principle, that if we apply a pressure to one point on a liquid, it actually increases the pressure throughout the liquid by that amount. So what we have is that the one atmosphere from the atmospheric pressure out here is transmitted through to here. So we've got one atmosphere is equal to this H rho G. And so now we can substitute everything in here to solve this to find h, the height that the mercury would rise to if we had one atmosphere of pressure. So one atmosphere is 1.01 times 10 to the 5 pascals, that's in SI units. h, this will give us in metres, we use rho in SI units, which is the 13,534 times 9.8. And so h is equal to 1.01 times 10 to the 5 over 13,534 times 9.8 and solving that on the calculator we end up with 0 0.761 meters so it rises 76.1 centimeters or we can put this as 761 millimeters so this is where the units millimeters of mercury actually come in one atmosphere is equal to 761 millimeters of mercury because it causes mercury to rise up one of these traditional barometers 761 millimeters. So when people measure blood pressures they typically measure them in millimeters of mercury. So you may know that resting blood pressure is meant to be around about 120 on 70 millimeters of mercury. So that's where those units come from. We'll be looking at blood pressure in the later video. Now that was traditionally how barometers were made and they were very good at predicting the weather. But more recently barometers have been made slightly differently. What I have here is another example of a barometer. So this barometer has a little silver container back here. Inside that container is a vacuum. As the pressure changes because of the ideal gas law that we saw in the hot air balloon topic, PV is equal to NRT, as the pressure changes, the volume of this metal container actually changes a little as well. And as the volume of that, cha as the volume of that chamber changes, it pushes against a spring, which has gears and things which connect it to this needle here. And so this needle get, tells us what the pressure is and in the barometer that tells us around this barometer you can see we've got stormy rain change fair and very dry 
So it's warning us that there's a change of weather along the way. There's other units for pressure here as well. We've also got millibars and centimetres of mercury. So centimetres of mercury were the traditional unit for pressure because of that traditional barometer, the traditional way of measuring pressures.